As women, we define ourselves by the roles we play. We define ourselves by the roles we play. We judge ourselves through the eyes of others. All right, so I'm, I wanted to be a, the best wife, mother, grandmother, entrepreneur. But I can be a better wife, mother, grandmother, entrepreneur if I'm a better Sharon. So all of you write your own name across the top of the list. And at my age, it's becoming more and more clear to me that I need to take care of this to be a better wife, mother, grandmother, entrepreneur. And I am the worst one. Most of my life, I put myself last. Any else of you kind of guilty of putting yourself last? Yeah, a few hands. Not raised, that should be, I think. So taking care of yourself. Understand that you need to nurture that greatness. You know, we spend life multitasking, right? Doing all kinds of different things. And then we come into this wonderful thing called work-life balance. So I want everybody to stand up and try not to knock into your neighbor. We're going to do a little exercise. <clears throat> I want you to put your feet shoulder width apart, hands down by your sides. Right? I want you to close your eyes and I want you to be balanced. Did you feel the energy drop in the room? Now open your eyes, look at me, smile. Go back and forth like this, look at your neighbor, smile. You feel the energy going up? We are never balanced. <laughs> never. We are never balanced. The only place the word balance belongs is the yoga studio and the dance studio. We have so many aspects of our life. We have work, family, spiritual, physical, financial. We are all of those things combined. And as women, we need to look and drive to have one big life. Say it with me. One big life. If you wake up in the morning and you don't, you're not happy about what you did yesterday with your kids, just make a different decision today. Don't carry that guilt because you're just using precious time today. So stop worrying about work-life balance. Thank you very much. Now what I want to talk to you about, though, is debt life because that does impact every other aspect of our lives. When we are heavy in debt, it colors everything in our life. At the end of the day, we have to focus on that. And so when you are in fear and worry, I want you to write down this, this definition because it really changed my life about 10 years ago. I found it preparing for a conversation with some other women. To worry is to pray for what you do not want. To worry is to pray for what you do not want. And this one tool has helped me because I happen to be the queen of worry. I don't know if you have any other worriers in the room, but I'm a pretty good one. Um, I came from the champion. My mother was the queen of worry. And when I read this definition, it allows me to stop. I, st I call it my own personal little rototiller, right? We make ourselves sick worrying about what's going to happen. And usually the reality is never as severe as what we've put ourselves through. But now when I, when I find myself in that same cycle of worry, I stop. And I go, Sharon, stop concentrating on what I don't want to have happen and start concentrating on what I do want to have happen. And it is a miracle, ladies. So please use this definition in your own life. It helps you stop and recharge your brain and refocus so that you can concentrate on the outcome you do want to have happen. And you will see such a change in your life. When it comes to money, you're either a master of your money or a slave to it. 
and I don't need to ask you which one because there's nothing in between. You know, we have come to the point in our world where 38% of households, women are making more than the men. And that's, and that's creating a huge cultural shift, one that we need to be aware of and also understand that we can encourage our daughters to understand that those changes are happening. You know, I come, grew up during a time when that wasn't the case. And so I'm really loving seeing it. And what happens is we talk about our children, but research shows that daughters of working moms actually out-earn by 23% women of stay-at-home moms. And so the thought of feeling guilty about working, stop it. Because you're actually demonstrating the ability to do both to your children. And the sons become better dads and better husbands. So let's have a round of applause for working moms. So at the end of the day, you can be a super mom. You already are, because you're doing it all. And you're living one big life. Say it with me, one big life. You are, and you're balancing all of those things. And that's what you have to give yourself a little bit of relief in the fact that we can create the life that we want. Personal success equation is something that we came out with on, our, on my first book with the Napoleon Hill Foundation called Three Feet from Gold. And I want you each to think about this as I share it with you. It's combining your passion, that inner drive, with your talent. What did you, you know, your education, your experience. And most of us stop there. We think we have to do it on our own. You don't. True success comes when you have the power of association, the power of knowing to get the people around you to support you. Have people on your team who are strong where you are weak. That combine understanding that you need to have the right people on the bus in the right seats. So eventually maybe you can get off the bus, right? Having the right association taking the right action. Now, how many of you have ever known that you should do something, but didn't do it? Yeah. We all have that issue, and it's taking the action that you need to, to go to the next level. And then there's faith. We almost went to press without faith. And I said there was something different about the people we interviewed who were able to stay successful through the downturn. That's the title, Three Feet from Gold. So many people quit right before the success happens. And those that persevere during our economic crisis, we interviewed them, and that's the book, Three Feet from Gold. How many of you have read Three Feet from Gold? Great, super, okay. I recommend it, even though I wrote it, I recommend it. Um, because this F, for most of us, is fear and it keeps us from having that success, or we stop right before we see the light. And if we can get faith, faith in yourself, faith in what you're doing, faith that it's needed and necessary, that's gonna help you persevere, help you get through. And having the right people on your team that are gonna keep your head above water when you feel like you're just treading and you're just about to give out, they swim up and keep you going. That's when you know you have the right people on your team. Bad stuff happens all the time. Every adversity, every failure, every heartache carries with it the seed of an equal or greater benefit. Now, I've shared with you my history and my story about building the talking book industry globally, and the personal finance brand of Rich Dad, and then stepping into the Napoleon Hill brand. All of my life, I have worked to be the straight A student, <laughs> to be number one in my field. And then um, in December of 2012, I lost my youngest son. That's when adversity redefines your life. And it's when you say, what am I going to do? What is, what is, what's left, right? 
And so for the last five years, I was coasting. Anybody ever been in neutral? So work was my, um, my uh, salve. I continued writing, Think Courage for Women came out, and I found solace in that. But I was not striving to be number one. I was just doing what I was really good at. My, I was literally in autopilot. Anybody ever been in autopilot? Yeah. And so for the last year, I actually was talking to friends and family and some of my fans about maybe it was time for me to take a step back. And I got pushback. And so I made the decision to go play big again. And so 2018 is a whole new initiative, and I'm going to invite you to join me in the... Thank you. Because if you're going to work hard, you might as well work hard to be the best. Because that's how you can impact the greatest number of people. Because when it happens to you, there's only up. It redefines everything. Things that I thought I lost sleep over before I lost my son, doesn't bother me at all anymore. It redefines life. And it redefines what, what is your purpose. And a lot of times I ask you, have you been playing too safe in your own field? Because you're comfortable. So I'm challenging you to step out of your comfort zone. You deserve better. There's no doubt about it. You deserve the success. It's waiting for you. You just need to grab it. We live in a world of abundance, not a world of scarcity. You know, last night we talked, um, somebody said, well, I said, you are all experts. I want everybody to say, I am an expert. I am an expert. Say it like you mean it. I am an expert. Okay, so I want you to change one word. I am the expert. I am the expert. Yes, you are. Now, you would have a whole lot stronger tone if I asked you to say you are the expert to your neighbor. Okay? Because we want, I used to say, I'm pretty good at it. I didn't want to say I'm an expert. Well, ladies, I'm the number one financial literacy expert in the world, and I'm very proud of it. Each of you, thank you. each of you is an expert in your field. You are the expert, because nobody's walked in your shoes. Nobody's had the experiences you've had. Nobody has had the opportunities you've had. And combine that together with your passion, your talent, your associations, the actions that you take, and your faith in yourself. Faith that what you are doing needs to be done. Faith that it will succeed. Faith that it's needed and necessary. All of those things combine to open that door of opportunity for you. So again, I ask you, are there doors of opportunity waiting for you? Is there a door you need to close in your life today? Because I started to close this door and just start doing you know, the speaking and not really growing. And I got major pushback, actually from my own family, because I have more to share, as do you.